Hey guys, we're right here and today back with a new Dragon Ball What If, and this time, this is um definitely, well, I think more of an original What If than well some of my uh, some of my other ideas. Like when I say more original What If, like it's um a little more. I guess far fetched than most of my other what ifs. That is, what if Barney went with Goku to Earth? Now, no doubt most of you guys, especially new viewers, are going to be asking, who is Barney? Well, if you've watched, um, seen any other of um, a lot of my what if videos that I've covered on this channel, especially ones like. What if Gine, the mother of Goku, survived? What if Bardock survived? I didn't actually do a what if um, Bardock survived, um, but I did do a what if Bardock stopped Frieza, which I actually introduced Barney. Now, Barney, in my what ifs, is the third Saiyan child of Bardock and Gine. And um, I usually have her born significantly later in the story, so it doesn't interfere with Goku and Raditz, but this time, I'm actually going to have Barney born at the same time as Kakarot, as twins, so both of them can lead the planet together, and Kakarot can at least have one of his siblings with him on planet Earth. And of course, well, she ain't Raditz, <laughs> and well, she's a character, you know, I made up my wallet. But DB Rye, you're just throwing your own characters at a what if. She's not canon, she's not anything to do with Akira Toriyama. I'm not even gonna watch it. Unsubscribe, you have failed. That is it. <laughs> okay, kidding, kidding. But yeah. Anyway, let's just see how this would play out. So. Following the events of Dragon Ball Minus, Bardock has indeed returned, and um, is beginning to suspect that an attack by um, Frieza is basically imminent. He want, he he's beginning to feel that Frieza wants the Saiyan race dead, fearing the Super Saiyan legend, and well, his empire has become strong enough that really he doesn't really need the Saiyans anymore. So. With those thoughts in mind, and returning home, and being welcomed and embraced into the arms of his loving wife, Gine, huh. well, you haven't seen Barney and Kakarot yet. Come on, have a look, it's actually almost time to let them out. And well, Kakarot Definitely. Well, actually, scratch that. Barney has been let out of the capsule, her being a bit more of a... Well, as we know, Kakarot's always been more of a late bloom bloomer when it comes to his sibling, Raditz, who was let, let out earlier and on time. Kakarot, more or less, still sleeping. But Barney has just been let out. Her potential is a little bit higher than Kakarot's, or at least... It shows signs that it is. And well, if you've seen what Barney is like in the What If Bardock Stop Freezer What If, you'll see why. And well, basically, Bardock staring at his son and looking at his um, daughter, who's just basically just standing there, all innocent like there, Bardock has made the decision he's going to steal a space pod for the two of them. After all, they're young and small, they can both fit in a space pod, that's no problem. And basically, tells Gine that she's gonna, he's gonna send both their children off-world. But why, Bardock? Why would we do that to our own children? It's Lord Frieza. He's going to attack us. He fears the legend. The whole thing he says in the original during the whole Dragon Ball Minus manga, and of course, the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, and, well, the events play off like it does per normal, the difference is, Kakarot gets a sibling to go with him. 
and well, just like in the original, the power of the Goku Kakarot is sent off world, this time along with Barney and is on his way to Earth. Meanwhile, Bardock does try to stop Freezer's attack on the planet, but of course we all know how that goes. And well, Grandpa Gohan is not only watching one Saiyan child in this reality, oh yes, he's dealing with twins. And well, if Kakarot was trouble enough for him growing up before he falls and hits his head, well, he's actually got two of them to deal with. And well, Kakarot does fall and hit his head in the canyon, Barney does not. So, I guess the good thing there is, is that Kakarot still gets to keep his name of being Kakarot, and, um, well, Barney's sort of there to, um, fill in the blanks of, um, Kakarot's memories. So, he, do he doesn't remember, like, Gine and Bardock's face or anything like that, but thanks to Barney, he is reminded that he does have parents, he does, they do have an older brother out there somewhere, and that, that they are Saiyans, part of the proud Saiyan warrior race and all that, so, but still, Kakarot is still ultimately the Goku he is in the original. It's just he does, he does have some knowledge on who and what he is. However, both of them were not aware of the um, Great Ape Saiyan transformation. So unfortunately, when both of them do, did transform for the first time, um, Grandpa Gohan did unfortunately get himself trampled. They, they ju neither of them were simply ready for that fact. After all, none of them had experienced the transformation before, so... Yeah, I could somehow see Grandpa Gohan being trampled by the by the twins. As unfortunate and gruesome as that is. Well, the two were basically left on their own to survive and Barney surprisingly definitely had more or less the instincts for that. And well, Goku had no problem with that. Or Kakarot had no problem with that either. Yeah. It was clear that um, Barney was the um, stronger of the two. At least psychologically. She was like a bor born leader of the two. Whatever she said, Kakarot did. And well, one day, and um, Kakarot still had somewhat that belief that Grandpa's soul was in the Dragon Ball. Barney would sort of, even though she didn't believe that herself, she sort of went with that, you know, for Kakarot's sake, in order to comfort him, what happened to Grandpa Gohan. And after all, Barney did get along with Grandpa Gohan too, so she's just as sad that he was gone. And well, as um, time went on, eventually, this would lead to Bulma running into the twi twins, almost um, running down Kakarot, and, huh, you tried to stop me, monster. Um, Kakarot, that's not a monster, it's a car. Or so. After all, um, Grandpa Gohan did tell the kids often about city life and what cars were, and Barney knew a machine when she saw one. You know, after all, you know, saying space pods, all that thing. Yeah. It's clearly, it's clearly one of those cars Grandpa Gohan was telling us. Oh, so this is a car. Oh. And with that sort of awkwardness tidied up, Bulma was introduced to the twins and followed them home and did in fact acquire the Dragon Ball. And well, with that, the two were of course brought up to speed about what the Dragon Balls were and ultimately decided they would accompany Bulma on this mission because well, let's face it, if Bulma couldn't handle a couple of brats like them, yeah, she's not going to be able to handle the um, terrors of um, things that actually would try and kill her, you know, like the hungry dinosaurs and tigers and things like that that roam the area. And well, perhaps 
with the um with the Dragon Balls, perhaps Barney could um use them to bring back Grandpa Gohan or even um perhaps her um own family, but I think she's more or less over that and would at least try to right the wrong they did in smushing Grandpa Gohan. After all, the um, destruction that happened when Grandpa Gohan was trampled, Barney was smart enough to um, realize that it was the pair of them that did that to Grandpa Gohan. Kakarot, of course, was not smart enough to work that out. Of course, she would never tell Kakarot it was them. And well, this led to um, events and Dragon Ball definitely slightly playing off a little differently as as far as um like having Oolong join the team well she was Bane was more or less easily able to outsmart the pig and well Goku didn't have to disguise himself because you know they had Bane Bane with him and Oolong did sort of bring his sort of attention to her and then later on Bulma so basically it was um, Barney who disguised herself as Coco Wampa or whatever her name was and ultimately yes trying to get away from one Saiyan in Kakarot in the original was bad enough with Barney there too there was just um yeah no chance and they weren't intimidated and fooled by his transformations either and well, thanks to them um, recovering the children that Oolong, I guess, more or less abducted, and also forcing him to um, go along with them, after his transformation abilities could come in, in useful, they were rewarded by the villagers of their Dragon Ball and moved along. And well, this would eventually bring... Goku and his twin sister Pane into the crosshairs of Yamcha and um yeah Yamcha did not have any luck whatsoever even though even though more or less in the original series you could say Yamcha won round one in their first battle it's just well even two hungry Saiyans are better than one hungry Saiyan Yamcha could not beat the two of them together. And well, as far as teamwork goes, Barney and Kakarot were um, definitely quite a formidable team. No matter what Yamcha could do or whatever trickery he could try and pull off, they were ultimately fooled by the two. If, um, you know, even if you somehow managed to fool Kakarot, you could not fool Barney. And Barney... A lot like Bulma, never trusted Oolong, and well, let's just say she never took the ju the um, drug juice that um, Oolong spiked their drinks with later to try for Oolong to try and make a run for it and steal the Dragon Balls and well do whatever else he was gonna do. <laughs> hmm. So basically, they couldn't trust Oolong as far as they could throw him. And ultimately, yeah, Yamcha just had no hope whatsoever, and this led to him, you know, following them around like he does in the original, and, yeah. And basically, I guess really with the whole addition of another Saiyan, it just made the whole thing a lot easier, and well, you know, Sha um, Shu, Pilaf's minion, couldn't even steal the Dragon Balls from him in his robot suit, you know, even though, just like in the original, he does um, attack him by surprise, but, you know, not only do you have the addition of Yamcha and Oolong into the group, you've got two, you've got two Saiyans to deal with, so Shu was ultimately beaten, and peel off didn't get his hands on their stolen Dragon Balls, at least not until 
they um, venture into Pilaf's palace and he's able to knock him out with the knockout ga gas and steal him from him that way. And well, thanks to um, them, them having their little interaction with Master Roshi, first from um, returning the turtle and getting his Dragon Ball, and again from observing Master Roshi's Super Kamehameha, putting out Fire Mountain for the Ox King and Chi Chi, because yes, those two events still happen. Chi Chi, both Kakarot and Bane, both learnt the Kamehameha, and were able to blow, blow away out of the um, wall and ultimately stop Pilar from getting his wish. And surprisingly, Oolong did not actually get the opportunity to do his wish either. Bane got to the Dragon Balls first, and out of nowhere, she just wished to um, bring Grandpa Gohan back. She probably could have gone ahead and wished for Gine or maybe her father back. Because after all, there are no time limits in um, in wishes for, for a single person, a single person who is dead. It's only a group of people where that limit is brought up. You know the whole, can't bring back people who've been dead longer than a year? That only works if you're bringing back a group of people. One-on-one -on -one wishes, it doesn't matter. Otherwise, you wouldn't have Freezer back in the Resurrection of F arc in Dragon Ball Super, yeah? So there we are. That's debunked once and for all. And, um... Where was I? So, yes, so... Because Bane knows or at least figured out that it was Kakarot and her that um, killed Grandpa Gohan, it just seemed right to bring him back. And, and well, if it stopped Pilar from taking over the world, there you go. So Grandpa Gohan is actually restored and brought back to life in this timeline. Which is good, and I think that's only fair too. And well, thanks to um, Barney's wish, the Dragon Ball's being scattered, and well, even though... Pilaf did try to um, have them rearrested. Ultimately, um, Shu's police dog force and their mech suits were just no match for um, Barney and Kakarot, especially with the full moon out and both of them transforming once again, wrecking his palace and um, ultimately forcing them to flee. And well, luckily... Because this happened earlier, and pretty much Yamcha, Bulma, and Oolong were pretty much out of the palace already, they were able to get far enough away that they were out of the crossfire. And basically... They basically just had to wait till the following day when Barney and Kakarot eventually changed back. And, um... Basically... Barney actually wanted to ask what happened last night because she remembers this sort of sensation from when they trampled Grandpa Gohan and well back when they transformed the first time and they were ultimately informed that yes they transformed into a pair of giant apes and went on a bit of a rampage and that Barney would, would um basically have to work out some sort of countermeasure to try to prevent them from transforming and going on rampages like this in the future. You know, what if they were in a crowded city or somewhere like that? So they obviously needed some sort of countermeasure for this. And well, Bulma basically throws um, this dino cap and had a couple of sunglasses in there. Hmm, maybe a pair of sunglasses might actually prevent this for when you're out on during those full moons. And well, it would be some time before they would actually have to have the chance to sort of test this again. But the bottom line is, when everyone parted ways, Kakarot and Barney could go back looking forward that Grandpa Gohan would be there waiting for them. And I think that's where we'll sort of um, leave things for right now. So what do you guys think? I know I basically did stick to most of the canon here. But I did hope that I was able to um, form a bit of a bit of a difference there, and at the very least, we did get we do get Grandpa Gohan back 
for the rest of um, Dragon Ball. And, you know, Barney was um, quite handy and useful, and especially with keeping her younger brother in mind, and, um, well, was definitely able to stop him from acting stupid around Bulma some of those times, and um, actually joined in Bulma with um, pummeling him when he, um, you know, does the whole pat, pat thing he does. Yeah. Anyways. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And, um... Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments. And I will see you guys again next time.